Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Living Will Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Living Will, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by the Investopedia team, updated July 14, 2021. In prior presentations, we've been looking at estate planning, now focusing in on particular components of it, particular tools, this time that being the living will. First question, what is a living will? A living will, also known as an advanced directive, is a legal document that specifies the type of medical care that an individual does or does not want in the event they are unable to communicate their wishes. So in the case of an unconscious person who suffers from a terminal illness or a life-threatening injury, doctors and hospitals consult the living will to determine whether or not the patient wants life-sustaining treatment such as assisted breathing or tube feeding. So at that point in time, clearly you can't make the decision in and of yourself, so you might want to think about making that decision basically beforehand. So if in the event that you're in that situation, it could be a little bit easier for uh, both yourself or the medical professionals in terms of what you want to do and for the family to move forward at that point uh, with whatever your wishes are. In the absence of a living will, decisions about medical care become responsibility of the spouse, family members, or other third parties. Uh, these individuals may be unaware of the patient's desires, or they may not wish to follow the patient's unwritten verbal directives. So understanding a living will, living wills and advanced directives come into play only when one faces a life-threatening condition and is unable to communicate their desires for treatment. So clearly, if you're able to communicate, then you can communicate your desires. But if you're in a situation where you cannot do so, then you might want to put something uh, in place if, uh, if you would like to have that decision you made at that point in time a little bit more easily possible. Doctors don't consult the wills for standard medical care that doesn't involve life-threatening situations. Every state provides for the drafting of a living will, although some states call the document a medical directive or a health care proxy. Some states let you prepare a detailed, customized living will, while others require you to fill out a standardized form. So this like many other things, it's not a federal type of thing, typically it's on the state side of things. The law could be different from state to state. You want to determine in your particular area what is the living will called, what is the process for filling out a living will, and then proceed accordingly. What is included in a living will? A living will addresses many of the medical procedures common in life-threatening situations such as res resuscitation via electric shock, uh, ventili uh, ventilation, and dialysis. One can choose to allow some of these procedures or none of them. So one can also indicate whether they wish to donate organs and tissues after death. Even if the patient refuses life-sustaining care, they can express the desire to receive pain medication throughout their final hours. In most states, one can extend the living will to cover situations where there is no brain activity or where doctors expect them to remain unconscious for the rest of their life, even if a terminal illness or life-threatening injury isn't present. Uh, because these situations can occur to any person at any age, it's a good idea for all adults to have a living will. So how to make a living will? Before making a living will, it's best to understand that it will not serve as a last will and testament whereby property and personal effects are allocated to others upon death. 
So we're not talking about a standard will. So most of the time when we think about a will, we think about at the point of death, we're trying to allocate our resources in such a way that we wish and to make that process a little bit easier on our loved ones. This isn't that. This is a living will, which has a different uh, specification as has been outlined here. A living will stipulates the type and levels of medical care when received uh, if incapacitated and for how long. The living will details the goals and wishes of a person in the event they can no longer care or make decisions for themselves. When creating a will, consider how you want to integrate your personal or religious beliefs into the care received. It might be helpful to segment the living will into categories of care. Uh, you can first identify the circumstances in which care should be extended to preserve life and what types of life-saving or preserving care, such as blood transfusions and dialysis, should be administered. Include a category to address whether you want care if you are in a vegetative or unconscious state. Indicate where you want to receive medical care, nursing home, at home, or in some other facility. You can also request how nutrition will be provided, whether it will be given intravenously, by mouth, or withheld. Another category to consider is pain uh, management. Uh, indicate, indicate the type and levels of treatment to manage pain. So you can further break down these categories into life-sustaining pain management and pain management in lieu of life-sustaining care. If you have family or friends who will be uh, responsible for overseeing your care, discuss your plans with them. It might be helpful to include them in the decision-making process as they might have insight into areas uh, otherwise overlooked when planning, uh, when planning alone. Lastly, enlist the help of a professional such as an estate planner or attorney. These experts can help you make decisions for the best possible outcomes. So healthcare proxy. In addition to the living will, one can select a healthcare proxy who is allowed to make decisions if they are incapable of making those choices. Some states call this individual a healthcare power of attorney. So now you're saying, I'm still alive, but I can't make my own decisions, so you're basically having someone else act kind of like as your agent for that particular decision. That's why they might call it a healthcare power of attorney, which is typically the document that you give someone to, to act kind of like as your agent to some degree in some components of your life. Living wills cover many medical decisions, but a healthcare proxy can consult with the doctor on other issues that may arise. When facing the loss of a loved one, families often disagree over treatment, so having a healthcare proxy reduces confusion over one's final wishes. One should discuss wishes with the proxy before naming this person, and be sure the proxy is willing to follow through with their desires. Living will versus a living trust. Although a living will and a living trust are commonly referred to in estate planning, they are different. We talked about a trust in a prior presentation. A living will involves how the subject person will be cared for if in a uh, compromised or incapacitated state. This uh, medical directive terminates upon the death of that person. So the living will, as we've been discussing, deals with if the person's in a particular type of medical state can't make the types of decisions they could if they were not in that state, but they're not dead. A living trust deals with the property and assets of an incapac incapacitated person. So if you're talking about a trust, you're thinking about a, an instrument that could be treated in some way similar to the will, but there's different reasons why you might set up a trust that we talked about in prior presentations, which could include making the probate process easier, but that process is geared towards the allocation of the assets and you know, the assets and liabilities, the financial side of things, and not generally on the side of things, of the uh, medical side of things, for that specific circumstances that we're talking about here with the living will. So the trust essentially becomes the new owner of the assets under the living trust agreement, a trustee or the person or persons responsible for managing the assets in, uh, is identified. So just as a living will deals with a living person, a living trust deals with the assets of a living person. So the living trust still could be applied when someone is living. So normally the living trust, again, could be in place to make the, the probate uh, process a little bit easier and it could also kick in 
if someone becomes incapacitated, but it's kicking in not to help with the, with the medical decisions generally, it's to help with managing the finance decisions. So they both are executed when the, the initiator lacks the capacity to make decisions for themselves. So do I lose control of my living will if I appoint a proxy? You will not lose control of your living will while you have the ability or capacity to make decisions. If incapacitated, the proxy has the legal authority to act on your behalf, making decisions about your health care. Review the living will with the proxy uh, to make sure they understand your wishes and agree to enforce them when needed. What is the difference between a living will and a last will and testament? A living will addresses the type of medical treatment given to a person who was unable to make those decisions for themselves. The living will carries out the expressed wishes regarding medical care of a person should they become unable to manage their care. The last will and testament uh, are the expressed wishes of a person regarding how their assets will be allocated or disposed upon their death. What is a bank's living will? A bank's living will is a legal report filed annually by companies instructing how the business will be liquidated in the event of insolvency. When we think about a bank's living will, it sounds similar, but you're talking about basically a death situation of a corporation, a legal entity, a bank, and the liquidation process, therefore, therein.